Hello lovely people, welcome back to another book chat. Um, and I'm so excited to share this book chat with you because this is a really special one for me because I have just received a proof copy of Baking Bad which is the very first Beaufort Scales cozy mystery. Um, and if you have been hanging around the, the website or if you signed up for the newsletter or anything like that, you'll probably already be familiar with Beaufort Scales, who is the High Lord of the Cloverly Dragons, which is a small in stature as well as a number clan of dragons which lives in the um, Yorkshire Dales, very near to Toot Hansel. <laughs> and Beaufort Scales, although a very old dragon, is also a very interested dragon and he's quite enjoying the modern world and learning about it, much to the despair of Mortimer, um, who is a much younger dragon and who tends to spend an awful lot of his time trying to make sure that Beaufort doesn't end up on the front pages of a newspaper somewhere. Um, and so, in Baking Bad, the very first of the mysteries, the vicar is murdered and it was a poison cupcake and the ladies of the Two Tansel Women's Institute are the most immediate suspects. Now. Beaufort has a very good relationship with the ladies of the Two Towns Women's Institute, and he's not having any of it. Not only that, Alice Martin, chair of the Two Towns Women's Institute, also RAF Wing Commander, retired, is absolutely not having anyone poking into, into the Women's Institute business and finding out about dragons or about her own possibly slightly dodgy past. Um, so, they intend to find the murderer before the detective inspector does. And this is Baking Bad, and I'm going to read you a little bit of it, which is when Detective Inspector Adams first comes in. Detective Inspector Adams, whose mother called her Jeanette, although very few other people did, was not happy. There were several reasons for her not being happy, including but not limited to the fact that although she'd moved to Leeds from London, her mother was still trying to set her up with a nice young-ish man who lived just down the street from her childhood home, and the fact that it was uncomfortably hot in the kitchen of the village hall, but she was still wearing a suit jacket that she didn't want to take off because that seemed terribly casual. And this particular crime scene was already far too casual, which was the main reason she was not happy at this very moment. James, she said sharply to the tall detective and constable who had driven up from Leeds with her. Who are all these people? Why do they keep coming in? He shrugged, shuffling his feet without looking at her. He had taken his jacket off and looked considerably cooler than she felt. I'm not sure. They seem to be local. It's a crime scene. Well, not technically. I mean, the actual crime scene is at the vicarage. He trailed off as she glared at him, palming a thin sheen of sweat off her forehead. Why is there food? It's traditional, a new voice said, and Dee Adams turned to find herself face to face with a slim older woman bearing a large plate of mini quiches, garnished with cherry tomatoes and sprigs of thyme. I guess it's really to feed the family in their time of grief, but in this case, well, it's just what we do. And it's quite lovely of you, the dean said, accepting the quiches eagerly. As the person responsible for overseeing the various parishes in the rural deanery, he had arrived not long after the detective inspector, and other than making tea for everyone, he had done nothing but get in the way as far as she was concerned. The local police must have called him at the same time that asked Leeds for reinforcements, which had been mid-morning of the day after the murder, so God alone knew what evidence had gone missing already. The Skipton lead DI was on holiday in Cyprus, which apparently meant that there was no one in the area who had the experience to carry out a murder investigation. Spring's a quiet time up here, the local sergeant had told DI Adams when she arrived. Too much work for most folks to do much murder or the like. D.I. Adams had volunteered immediately when the detective chief inspector in Leeds had announced the case, eager to get to grips with her first murder as a lead investigator. Technically, she wasn't in charge, of course, not in a murder case, but the DCI had made it clear that he expected it to be some sort of misadventure rather than homicide, and as she was a big shot cop from down south, he was certain she could handle it. She had managed not to put on a fake Cockney accent and say, all right, gov, or something equally in keeping, and had instead grimaced, nodded, and said that she was sure she'd have it tied up in no time. She'd been here half an hour and was already wondering if she might have made a bit of a miscalculation. As well as the steady stream of women bearing baking trays and cake tins and Tupperware containers in and out of the hall kitchen, there were three dogs barreling around the hall itself. A cat had just come in the kitchen window and stolen a piece of fish pie, setting both the dogs and a couple of women shouting. And the woman who'd discovered the body was being plied for details by more civilians and officers, who were mostly standing around drinking tea and eating biscuits. Isn't it lovely of the ladies? the dean asked, and D.I. Adams dragged her attention back to him. He looked like he'd enjoyed quite a lot of lovely dishes over the years. I'm quite sure it is, sir, but there really are far too many people in and out of here. We already know that the victim spent his last morning here, and it really shouldn't have been turned into a bloody cafe like this. Sorry, she added, not quite sure if bloody was the sort of thing a dean of the church might take offence to. Victim, someone said, and burst into tears. Now, now, Jasmine, the mini-quiche lady said, relieving the crying woman of a pyrex dish of... something. The items wasn't at all sure what it was, only that it was blackened on top and appeared to be bleeding underneath. The mini-quiche lady handed the dish to the dear, I whispered, throw that one out. She's a lovely girl, but it's not worth getting salmonella over, and led the still-sobbing Jasmine into the hall. D.I. Adam stared at the plate in horror, then shoved it at one of the local constables. Get rid of that, would you? He looked offended. That's my wife's, that is. 
Jesus Christ, sorry Dean, look, just put the damn, sorry, put the bloody dish in the fridge or something out of the way and clear this room, would you? I want everyone out of here, now. <laughs> and that is how Detective Inspector Adams ends up in Two Cancel. And she was meant to be just quite a small side character and she ended up taking over and is also very much part of book two, which will be coming out um, at the beginning of December. And I'm pretty sure she's got a standalone book in there somewhere as well. So I had enormous amounts of fun writing this and I am so excited to actually see it in person, as it were. Um, and I can't wait to share more with you. So if you haven't signed up for the newsletter already, go and, and do that sort of down there. Um, if you're reading this on the blog, if, if you're <laughs> if you're on if you're on Facebook, then I'll put a link in the description up there. Um, because as well as the five short stories, which introduce both at scales, I'm also going to be giving away um, ebook copies. So that will be to they'll be available to anyone who's who's subscribed to the newsletter. And I will also be doing a few giveaways of paperback copies as well, and probably also some of the both at scales mugs that I've been showing off. Um, and so yeah, thanks so much for watching and let me know your thoughts. Tell me if you'd like me to do a few more little excerpts. I know I'm not the best read louder, I can't do voices and things. Um, but if you'd, like me to, if you'd like me to read a few other little bits out of here, then let me know. Um, otherwise, tell me what your favourite sort of mystery series are, if you read mystery series. Or tell me about your favourite dragons. Um, and most of all, tell me what is the next release that you're really, really looking forward to. Um, so I can add things to my yeah painfully overloaded tbr <laughs> all right thanks so much for watching speak to you soon bye